During the Trump era, oil remained king. U.S. production surged to a record of nearly 13 million barrels a day, and the president wore it like a badge of honor. The United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere on planet Earth. This played well in the oil and gas states in America's Southwest, in the Rockies, and as far north as Pennsylvania, in an industry supporting nearly 10 million jobs. That fits in with this administration's worldview. They were inclined to reduce regulations on the, on the oil industry, uh, to, partly to allow it to produce more, but also to, to gather political support from it. The U.S. produced so much oil and gas, Trump was out to challenge Russia and Saudi Arabia overseas. The export of oil and gas has been seen as a tool, a geopolitical tool, even a weapon, uh, this concept of energy dominance. That strategy of growth at all costs came crashing down when COVID-19 triggered an oil bust, taking down over 500 energy companies with nearly $300 billion of debt. This year's wildfires on the West Coast and hurricanes hitting the Gulf of Mexico raised awareness of the growing threat of climate change. When Donald Trump thinks about climate change, he thinks hoax. When I think about it, I think jobs. Good paying union jobs that put Americans to work. The former vice president has pledged to not shutter U.S. shale, but the winds of change would blow in the direction of renewable energy. A Biden presidency could accelerate what is known as the energy transition away from fossil fuels. He is pledging $2 trillion to a Green Deal to speed up innovation and investment into clean energy. Is this the election that defines the energy transition? Adnan Amin is the former director general at the International Renewable Energy Agency in Abu Dhabi. I've talked to him personally on a number of occasions about renewables. I know that he has a passion for this new technology and the, the potential that it has, and the potential it has to create jobs and wealth in the United States. So too does Wall Street, with money flowing into renewable energy companies. In the last month, rising star Next Era topped the market cap of the once mighty oil and gas giant ExxonMobil. And when it comes to international policy, Trump was proud to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord in 2017, saying it was a job killer. Biden has pledged to leap back in. I think there is a very important signal when we're facing potentially catastrophic changes related to climate in the near future, that United States leadership in technology, in a political sense, uh, in bringing other countries along, but mostly from my point of view, in inspiring others about what can be done is sorely needed today. A high-stakes election that will also define the fate of fossil fuels and clean energy.